Good morning, you two. Um, today we are going to be looking at maths, specifically block graphs. You've done some tally charts and you've done some um, pictograms up until now. And today we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth at block charts. So here we go. As you can see here, it says a block graph is just another way to represent data. In the case of today, the data we've got is favourite superheroes in year one and the block graph that we're going to be creating is going to look as its base a little bit like this under here. So this is what we are aiming for. So block graphs have got lots of different features. They have got, of course, like our other graphs or our other charts, a title. So we know exactly what the data we're looking at is for. They've got data. That's all the information, the numbers, that's all data. They've got categories. So categories, we need to um, make sure each section, each block of the graph is labelled as a different category. And then the labels are the overriding name for all these individual characters in this case, or whatever it might be, smiley faces, colours, favourite transport, whatever it is, the overarching name, we call it superheroes in this case, and that's our label on that side, and the number of children on this side. It might be number of people or something different. Now, it also has the addition of axes. Now, axes are the line that goes down here and the line that goes across here and that's like the start, the starting point of our graph. When we draw our blocks, we don't go any further down or across from there. We always stay in this side, okay? Now the y-axis is our axis that goes down, our vertical axis. Our x-axis is the axis that goes across, our horizontal axis. Now we have done this before, but I know it's tricky to remember, so see if you can test yourself a little bit later on with the names of the X and the Y axis. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to model how to draw a block graph. Now obviously you don't all have a computer screen like this so I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch to me drawing on the um, paper, on our A-frame paper and we're going to be drawing it together. So what you can do is you can either use squared paper or you can use plain paper. Square paper just makes your life a little bit easier, but if you don't have squared paper, you can make it if you want to, but it's not necessary. As long as you've got a ruler, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as you've got a ruler, then there's really no need to worry um, about if you have squared paper or not. Okay, let's go over to the paper. Okay, so sorry, you might not be able to see my face. I'm too tall for this filming. So as long as you can see the board, that's the most important thing. So I'm just gonna go up here a little bit. And what we need to think about, first of all, is drawing our X and our Y axis. Now that depends, um, the size we need to draw, it depends on, first of all, um, how many children are going to like each character. We don't need to draw our line too long. If there's only five children that like one character and that's the most in number of children, there's no point in drawing a line that's 20 squares tall. The same with our categories. If we only have um, four or five categories, there's no point in using up 20 squares across because then you're going to have lots of empty space at the end. So with our data, and you've got the sheet um, of data, what we need to think about is how many superheroes there were. Now I know there were five superheroes, okay? And I also know that there were five children that liked the largest amount of superheroes. So five up and five across. If you want to double up, just to give yourself um, a bit of a bigger chart, that's fine. So we're gonna go 10 up and 10 across. So what you wanna do, always with a ruler, remember, we never draw lines without our ruler because we wanna make sure it's nice and straight. From this line up here, or from, let's go one further down so we've got room for our title, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
Okay. Now, if you're not using squared paper, you can use the guides on the ruler, the centimetre guides on the ruler for that. If you're using squared paper, you can use the squares to count it. Well, I'm just going to fit mine in at the bottom. So again, because we're doubling up this time, each category is going to get two squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. Now, can you remember which was the x-axis and which was the y-axis? Hmm, there's a good question for you. So remember the x-axis was the one along the bottom, the horizontal, and the y-axis was the one going up here, the vertical axis. And what we can do next is we can label our axis. Now, obviously, I haven't got enough space to write number of children here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go on the side and write it down. Number of children. Now I've told myself that this is the number of children, I need to actually mark where each number is going to be. Now when I do this, you must remember to mark each number across a line. Because the line, the, the line that you can see is the top of that number. So if you do it in the middle, you're only going halfway up the square. So you need to go to the top. So we always start with zero at the bottom. And again, I'm going halfway across that square. And I'm going to go miss a line, because remember I've given two squares for each number. One, two, three, four, so you can see there, nice and spaced out, and if you're on squared paper, each number is across the square. Don't go in the middle of the square, always go to the top and have your number across the middle of the square. Now we can think about the names of our superheroes that have to go along the bottom, our categories, and our label. So our label, our big overarching label, we were going to call superheroes. So I've done that down there. And now, for every two squares, I need to write my categories. So you can see, I don't know if you can quite see the board behind me, but you have this piece of paper as well. The first name, the first superhero is called Water Woman. Now make sure you use both those squares if you're using two. If you're only using one, you do need to squeeze it in because you can't go any further than what you've allocated for yourself, okay? You could even do little notches, little lines with your pen or pencil to remind yourself that that is one category, that is one superhero. Then we've got Ice Lady. Then we've got Super Dog. Then we've got Eco Warrior. And then we've got Fire keeper okay so we've nearly nearly done everything on our block graph before we want to start actually filling it in there's one thing that i haven't done yet but if you remember on my labels when i pointed out what should be on my block graph there's one thing i'm missing can you think what it is that's right, it's the title. And the title, well, as long as it explains what your graph is for, that's fine. I'm going to call it Favourite Super Heroes in Year One. And because it's our title, we can underline that, yes, with a ruler, well remembered. Fantastic. So there we go. Our block graph is ready to fill in. Now what we need to think about is the data that we're going to use to fill this in. And that means we need to count our superheroes. So if you've got your sheet, you need to count how many of each superhero there are. On that sheet or somewhere on your page, just note down how many children liked each superhero. 
And then what we're going to do is use that information, use that data and transfer it onto our block graph. So the first one was water woman. So you need to count how many water womans you can see. And I know that there were four water womans on that page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up the side here until I get to number four. And I know that I was using two squares because that's where I did my little notch. So I'm going to, from the number four, with my ruler, please remember our rulers, we're going to draw across two squares, and that's the top of my water woman column. Now what I need to do is join it down to the bottom. So I'm going to go from the edge of that line all the way down, and you can see that I've just used up my water woman column. I haven't gone into Ice Lady's column, I've stayed with Water Woman, and that's really important. The next one we're going to do is Ice Lady. Now I want you to count up Ice Ladies, how many children liked Ice Lady. That's right, there was four children that liked Ice Lady as well. So, again, we can come back to the number four. Now this is Water Woman, Ice Lady is going to be in the same line. So actually what we can do here, this is quite easy for us, is we can just carry our line on another two squares. Remember it is only two squares though because this is Ice Lady only, we're not going into Super Dog yet, he might be a different number. And then what we're going to do, because we always need to finish off our columns of our block graph, I'm going to draw that line down to finish it off so that Water Woman has got two columns, Ice Lady has got two columns and easily you can see here that four children liked Water Woman and four children liked Ice Lady. The next one we've got to do is Super Dog. Now, count Super Dogs. How many children liked Super Dog? That's right, five children liked Super Dog. So that means we need to look further, we need to go up one to number five. Now, Superdog's column starts over here. So I'm not going to draw a line straight from number five all the way across, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the far line of Ice Lady up until I hit five. And that's going to be the top of Superdog's column. Now I can go to the top of it and I can draw my line of two squares. You can see that I've got Ice Lady and Water Woman empty because they didn't reach number five. I've just gone to Super Dog. And again, just like the others, I need to make my column complete by going all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Now the last two, Eco Warrior and Firekeeper, can you count how many Eco Warrior, how many children, sorry, liked Eco Warrior? Correct, it was two children. So this one, this column, is going to be much lower. In fact, one, two, it's only going to be this tall. So what you can do is you can lie your ruler all the way across from number two. And where your super dog line is here, that's where you're going to draw two across, okay? Again, you're not going to draw across the other columns because that doesn't... That's not data for those columns, it's only data for Eco Warrior column. And like we did with all the others, we need to finish it off. And the last one for Firekeeper. How many children like Firekeeper? Well, they're the only ones left, and it was five again. So, what I'm going to do now is I know that this top line here is five because we've already done it for Superdog. So, by holding my ruler against the far side of Eco Warrior's line, I can actually continue it up, stop when I get to the same level as Superdog, and then I can draw my collar and hat, top, whatever you want to call it, across. Now, because it's the end of my page, I can't really draw a line down the side because it will be falling off the page. If you have still got space, you need to finish your column all the way down. And once you've done that, you can either leave it empty like this, or what's nicer and what can sometimes help you is to colour each column a different colour 
and it then is really easy to understand, really easy to see what your data is on your block graph, okay? But yours should look something like this, with all your labels, your title, your columns, all in the right place in the right order, and having used your rulers. Well done. There you go. I hope you enjoyed drawing your block graphs. They are really good fun once you get the hang of them. It's just remembering that ruler, remembering to be nice and neat, and really taking your time with each step. So if you needed to pause the video at any point to do that, to keep it up so that you can draw along, absolutely great. Tomorrow, we're going to be answering questions about that data. So I will see you then for more maths. <laughs>